All right, class, welcome back. Um, continuing on with Chapter 19, Rehabilitation Techniques for the Ankle. Um, I first want to start off by talking about general body conditioning. Um, I know I, I do this with every um, injured segment that we talk about, but we always want to be thinking, um, how can we keep this person you know, working out? Um, if with an ankle injury, they could be doing upper body exercises, um, could they still be doing thigh exercises, hamstring, quad? Um, with their ankle injury, can they get in a pool and do some cardio and running around in there? Can they get on a bike and cycle for some conditioning? Um, can we at least keep them weight-bearing to some extent? Um, can they be in a walking boot? Can they use their crutches to take some of the load off while they walk around? Um, so these are all things that we want to think about. Um, maybe we need to talk with our physician. Um, maybe we need to get creative. Um, but if we can do anything to keep them from just totally being off of that leg and totally not doing anything, <clears throat> um, then we can really um, help them in their rehab process and, and make sure that we don't hold them back more than they need to be. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> after we think about that, uh, we can move into some of the rehab techniques. Um, first, we move into a range of motion phase. Um, and one thing that we want to think about is joint mobilizations. Uh, we talk about that with most every joint. Um, but specifically with the angle joint, um, we use joint mobilizations a lot, actually. Um, and they can be very helpful and the reason is because when we do when we walk our walking gait we need dorsiflexion a lot and we can use joint mobilizations to help increase that um, dorsiflexion um, so just wanted to talk about how we do those real quick um, if you think about you know here's a picture of that ankle mortise again Think about dorsiflexion and plantar flexion at this sub tailor, or sorry, at this talocrural joint. Um, this is kind of kind of common sense, but it's not as obvious as with other joints. But if you think about if your leg was just hanging down and you plantar flexed, meaning you were bringing your toes towards you, um, it would be sorry. If you were plantar flex, flexing, meaning you were pushing your toes away from you, um, plantar flexing like you're pushing on a gas pedal, um, it's kind of like the foot is moving um, backwards, posteriorly. Okay, so if your leg is hanging down there and you point your toes towards the floor or away from you, um, it's almost like that foot is moving posteriorly. Okay, and then when you dorsiflex and you bring your toes towards you, it's almost like the foot is moving anteriorly, moving back forward. Okay, and I know it's a little wonky, but um, if you accept that mindset, then it helps the joint mobilization technique to make sense. Okay, so we have the talus, which is a... Um, convex surface and we always mobilize the distal segment so um, in the talocrural joint the distal segment is the talus it's convex and because of our convex concave rule the talus is going to move in the opposite direction it's going to glide in the opposite direction of the movement that's going on okay so if we think about plantar flexion and pushing down on a gas pedal, pointing our toes towards the floor. If we think of that as the foot moving backwards, okay, then we can think about the talus is moving forwards in that motion, in that movement. Okay, when we bring the toes back towards us in dorsiflexion, if we think about that as the foot moving forward, we can think about it as the talus moving backwards, posteriorly. Okay, so what we know about dorsiflexion is not only is it very important for our gait, for our walking ability, um, but we can increase it with joint mobilizations. 
And so if we want to increase dorsiflexion, where the foot is moving forward, we want to mobilize the talus posteriorly. Okay, and there's two ways that we can do that. Um, we can either put a hand on the front of the ankle <clears throat> and physically move that talus posteriorly and push it backwards. Or we can grab the calcaneus in the back and we can pull it towards us in this picture. And because it has such a strong attachment with the talus, it, the calcaneus will move the talus posteriorly as well. So we can do a posterior mob either from putting our hand on the front of the talus or from grabbing the back of the calcaneus. Um, <clears throat> and if we do that posterior mobilization, we can help increase dorsiflexion. Okay. Now obviously the opposite is true as well. If we need help getting plantar flexion, we can mob the calcaneus anteriorly towards the front, towards the toes, um, and we could get increased dor uh, plantar flexion. Okay, so that's some joint mobilizations at that talocrural joint, and we use those a lot in rehab. Okay, um, going back to our rehab techniques, okay, joint mobilizations, flexibility, we want to start thinking about stretching um, the joint out doing um, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, inversion, eversion. Um, we can do this just with the foot on the ground and rolling the joint around in, in circles. Um, we could have a clinician come in and actually grab their foot and stretch it in different directions. We could use a towel wrapped around the foot to do this. Um, here's a couple of pictures. Okay, so this, I mean, this is a quad stretch in picture A, but obviously she's still um, stretching and um, increasing plantar flexion. Okay, here's how we could stretch dorsiflexion, okay, with a towel. Um, here's a good one leaning up against a wall. You can do it with the knee straight and get um, kind of a high stretch in the calf. You could do it with the knee bent and get a lower stretch kind of in the Achilles tendon area. We can do the same thing on a slant board if you have one, knee straight, knee bent. You could do this off of a step like a, um, a stair in a house or a curb or something like that. Okay. Um, neuromuscular training can start to happen right after that range of motion phase. Um, we can use things such as a BAPS board, um, a BAPS board. Um, you can make by yourself or you can buy the fancy ones, but it's basically a, a board with some sort of ball on the bottom so it's an unstable surface and we can roll the ankle around in different directions with that. That can help both with range of motion and with neuromuscular control. Um, they have lots of different options, rocker boards, dyna discs, um, but they're all trying to work on um, moving the foot around in all those different directions, trying to get neuromuscular control of it um, and help increase range of motion at the same time. Um, if you're using something like a BAPS board where you're on that unstable surface, <clears throat> you would want to work from non-weight bearing, just sitting down and putting the foot on it, to partial weight bearing where you put a little bit of weight into it, and then eventually full weight bearing where you stand and put your full body weight onto it. Um, so those can be very helpful. Um, sorry, wrong direction. Okay, then as we get into a strengthening phase, we can start with some isometrics, nice and early, um, easy to do with a clinician where the clinician resists your range of motion and you just, um, isometrically hold plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, inversion, eversion, um, then as we start to progress, we want to make sure that you're actually working through that full range of motion. Again, you could have a clinician resisting. You could use some sort of resistance tubing um, or like a TheraBand. Um, there's specific PNF patterns that you could follow um, where the clinician is um, resisting them. Again, through this range of motion and strengthening phase, we want to utilize your pain scale. Okay. We should be in an uncomfortable state because we're trying to um, get, we're trying to push you farther. 
um, but it shouldn't be painful. If it's painful, then we need to back off. Okay, and then here's some pictures. Uh, here's a clinician resisting um, inversion right there. He's resisting them, that um, patient from going into inversion. Okay, here's an example using some resistance tubing or um, an ankle weight you could utilize. Um, and then here's a good picture. Calf raises are super important. If you think about walking, running, jumping, all of those, you need to be able to leave and push off from your toes. And that's often the hardest part to get back when you're, doing, when you're rehabbing from an ankle injury, like an ankle sprain or something, is to be able to push off those toes. So doing calf raises, starting double leg calf raises, um, working into single leg calf raises um, is very important. Starting from flat ground and then working towards being off of a step where your heel is hanging down. Um, those calf raises can be really important to getting your normal walking gait, to getting running, to getting jumping back. Okay. Um, I wanted to take a second to show you a couple of videos. Hopefully, yeah, the screen is centered on there. Um, so here is a video. This is an exercise called four-way ankle theraband or resistive band. Um, so you, you put something underneath the heel so that the foot's up off the ground or you could be hanging off the edge of a table. Using a theraband, um, and you can wrap it around the other foot or a clinician could hold it for you. Um, here she's working on eversion, pulling away from the band. And so that's strengthening those peroneal muscles because they do eversion. Okay. We don't want her knee to be rotating at all. We want all the movement to come from the ankle. Okay, here's the same thing. Um, putting the leg across the other leg and doing inversion. So working that posterior tibialis muscle. Uh, we could also, again, have a clinician holding the band so that you don't have to cross across the leg like that. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, here she's going to show us um, plantar flexion, I believe. So wrapping that theraband again on the foot. She's holding for resistance. This is easy for you to do on your own as the patient. Um, and then just pushing down like you're pushing on the gas pedal. And that's going to work that gastrocnemius and that soleus. Um, and same thing with the calf raises. The calf raises are going to work the gastrocnemius and the soleus. And then here's the last one. Um, again, foot lifted off the ground. Um, easier to have a clinician do this for you, but you could tie it to a table leg or a chair leg, something that's a good fixed point. Um, and then pulling towards you into dorsiflexion, and this is going to work the anterior tibialis muscle. Okay, let's get rid of that one. Um, now, after we work through that um, strengthening phase, we're going to get into a plyometric phase. Okay, and here is a good um, demo of a plyometric exercise that I like to utilize. This is single leg hops. Okay, and really we can start this as double leg hops. You can do all of these double leg before you do them single leg. But you're going to start in place, then you're going to move front to back, front to back with single leg. Um, then after that you want to go laterally, so you're going to go side to side. Okay, and you can make sets of 5, 10, 15, however many you want, and you can start to increase your repetitions. Okay, and then you're going to start going all the way around in a circle like that. Okay, all the way sideways, forward, sideways, backwards. And then now he's doing what's called a figure eight. Um, and you don't have to have the tape for this, but you're going sideways, diagonal, sideways, diagonal. Okay, so that's another great one as well. Um, let's see if I can get the... Uh... There we go. We're back. Um, okay, so those are some good exercises for the ankle um, when we're in rehab. Okay, and then we want to have a good return to play protocol. Remember, um, sport-specific exercises with measurable outcomes.